The video you are seeing is from Astronomy Live, filmed on June 29, 2014. It's a time lapse showing his telescope tracking the sky while the camera attached takes multiple images. After the images were captured, they were stacked to render the final image you are now seeing on your screen. While this image is indeed beautiful, it points to something else that is also beautiful. The fact that the image could be captured at all. Notice how the telescope only had to rotate one axis to capture the image. This is because Astronomy Live was using an equatorial telescope mount. It works by aligning the rotational axis of the mount parallel to the axis of our planet, meaning the axis of rotation on the mount is aligned with the celestial pole in the sky. This mount works so well that it's used by astrophotographers. The reason is because it corrects for field rotation which is a huge benefit because field rotation will ruin any long exposure shot. And while the concept of such a mount is simple, it still delivers a fatal blow to the flat earth conspiracy. Not only can this telescope mount confirm the shape of the earth, it can also determine the size of the earth. And we will demonstrate that in this video. So when a flat earther asks, how have you determined the value for R, you can simply point them to this video. First, let's imagine we're going on a road trip. This road trip will have the following stops. Walhalla, North Dakota. Mitchell, South Dakota. Hutchinson, Kansas. Rush Springs, Oklahoma. And Alice, Texas. As you can see, our stops are not random, as they follow roughly a straight line from north to south. Our goal for this trip is to drive between these locations following the most direct path. Once at each location, we will stay for a night and get some measurements from our equatorial telescope mount. While setting up the EQ telescope at each location, you document the angle of the rotational axis, ensuring the scope is level when making your measurements. Again, we want to document the angle the EQ axis has to be at in order to be aligned with the North Celestial Pole. After a few days of driving to each location to make your measurements, you document the total distance driven. Now we are ready to look at the data. Here are the EQ angles that you found for each location. Walhalla, North Dakota, 48.9 degrees. Mitchell, South Dakota, 43.7 degrees. Hutchinson, Kansas, 38.06 degrees, Rush Springs, Oklahoma, 34.78 degrees, and Alice, Texas, 27.75 degrees. So what does this data tell us? Well, to find out, we will need to plot our data points on two different models, the first being the Flat Earth model, and the second being the Globe Earth model. First, we will start with the Flat Earth model. We will need to make sure that the model is made to scale, so refer back to your notes and the distance driven between each stop. After plotting our points on the flat earth model, we will now add the angles we recorded during our trip. And here's what they look like. As you can see, we have a problem. The lines of altitude when plotted on a flat earth render contradictory answers for the direction of the celestial pole. In fact, every single intersection can be a possible location for the pole star Polaris. So, is it here? Is it here? What about here? So, in order for the flat earth model to make any sense, Polaris would have to be in multiple different spots, in multiple different directions, all at the exact same time. Now, I'm not willing to accept a contradictory answer like that, so let's take a look at the same exact points as plotted on a globe. And would you look at that? Same points, same line of altitude relative to their local level, yet we see no contradiction here. In fact, this is what we would expect to see when focused on the pole star Polaris, which is very, very, very far away. Zooming in a bit, you can see the angles listed that were plotted for each location. They are the same angles that were used in the previous model. So, between the two models, it's clear which model I trust more. This shows the true shape of our planet. But with this data, we can go even further. We can also confirm the size of the Earth. 
so let's use our data to find a value for the radius. At the start of our trip in Walhalla, North Dakota, we recorded an altitude angle of 48.9 degrees. At the end of our trip in Alice, Texas, we recorded an altitude angle of 27.75 degrees. This gives us a difference of 21.15 degrees. Now, let's imagine we drove directly between our first and last stop to get the total distance between these two points. Granted, it's not a perfect line that would bring a mathematician joy, but it's good enough for our purposes. We're just looking to get within striking distance of the actual answer. So, with that said, the total distance we drove was 2,542.76 kilometers. Now, if 21.15 degrees equals 2,542.76 kilometers, what does 360 degrees equal? To find out, we will use this equation. 2,542.76 over 21.15 equals x over 360. Doing the math and solving for x, this gives us an answer for the circumference of the Earth, which comes to 43,281 kilometers. If we take that value and divide it by 2 pi, we will get a value for the radius of the Earth. Solving this out, we get 6,888 kilometers. The accepted value is 6,371 kilometers, which means despite our imperfect method, we are within 8% of the accepted value. Not bad at all, and there you have it, a value for R. So, not only can we confirm the shape of the Earth with an equatorial mount, we can also figure out a value for R. But before we conclude this video, there is one other fact I would like to discuss. Remember what was shown at the beginning of this video. We watched as an EQ mount was able to track a celestial object perfectly, giving us the stacked image by rotating only one axis. Now, would this be possible on a flat Earth? Absolutely not. The simple fact is this. If we were on a flat Earth, the EQ mount would have to move two axes of rotation in order to track any object in the sky, not just the one axis that has been demonstrated to work in reality. Here is a video that demonstrates what I'm saying. Many thanks to Sly Sparkane for making the following illustration. There you have it, 
the flat earth model requires the movement of two axes while reality only requires the movement of one the equatorial telescope mount is a true nail in the coffin for the flat earth conspiracy I would like to thank Astronomy Live for his footage, and I would like to thank Sly Sparkane for making that beautiful illustration. The links to both of their channels are listed down below. With that, my name is Red, this has been His Rhetoric, and as always, have a good night.